Sayed Hossein Musabian is currently a visiting research scholar at the Woodrow Wilson School at Princeton University. Hossein has worked as a journalist, diplomat, nuclear negotiator, and scholar over the course of a distinguished career, of a distinguished career, of a distinguished career. Sayed Hossein Musabian served as ambassador to the newly reunified Germany from 1990 to 1997. The Moabit criminal prison houses four Lebanese people, Youssef Amin and Abbas Rayel, accused of direct involvement in the Mykonos killings, and Mohammed Atris and Atala Avad, accused of collaborating with them. They've been imprisoned along with their Iranian leader, Kazem Darabi. If he had not been arrested, there would have been no evidence of the Iranian regime in the crime. من که مدارک اونها رو ندیدم منتها اولا مطمئنم که این نظر دولت آلمان نیست و ثانیا رأی اصلی رو رئیس دادگاه و قاضی میده و در اون مورد هم من مطمئنم که هیچگاه دادگاه چنین ادعایی نخواهد کرد به خاطر اینکه از عدم دخالت خودمون اطمینان دارم ما اعدام بدون دادگاه در داخل ایران هم انجام نمیدیم با قانون اساسی ما مغایره منطقه ما بعد از قضیه برلین هم موضوع علت مرگ چار کرد ایرانی رو رها نمی کنیم دنبال میکنیم ببینیم چه دست هایی در کار بوده که اینا کشته شدن ما رسما اعلام کردیم به سران جامعه اروپا که با ترور و تروریزم در هر شکلی به هر دلیلی در هر کشوری توسط هر کسی با هر شیوهی مخالف Hossein Musavian is one among many other high Iranian officials who are welcome in the U.S., are assisted by influential political circles, and get recycled as scholars in the best universities where they get recognition and respect and then lobby in favor of the Iranian regime. But Musavian's case is the most revealing to show the U.S. political and financial circles behind these operations. In 2009, Musavian was admitted by Princeton's Liechtenstein Institute for Self-Determination, a part of Woodrow Wilson's School of Public and International Affairs in this university. Few months before Musavian's arrival, the center had organized a secret meeting between former Iranian officials and some U.S. politicians. The meeting took place in March 2009 in Liechtenstein, a small country in Europe. The result of the two-day meeting was a report that urged newly elected President Obama to be more flexible and more generous toward Iran. This was not the first time that Princeton was involved in unofficial diplomacy with Iran in a clear effort to echo the Iranian regime's views. In 2005, 
The center organized an event in Liechtenstein in which the Iranian ambassador to the UN was the key speaker and other Iranian officials participated via video from Tehran. Again, in 2007, the Iranian ambassador was Princeton's keynote speaker at a new event organized in Princeton, New Jersey. After a year at Princeton, in 2010, Musavian moved to Woodrow Wilson's program on science and global security, where he was teamed up with Frank von Hippel and Scott Kemp, a scientific advisor to U.S. Department of State. A significant rehabilitation for an Iranian former official with blood on his hands. According to Princeton, Musavian's mission is to explore possible resolution of the impasse over Iran's nuclear program. He should write a book and brief the academics, the media and the general public on the possible elements of a diplomatic solution to the current standoff over Iran's nuclear program. As planned, Musavian published his book, participated in many conferences and interviews, and wrote numerous articles. They are entirely and absolutely nothing more than a PR campaign for the Iranian regime. While Musavian criticizes Ahmadinejad, who has no real power or control on nuclear program and foreign policy, he uses every occasion to defend the Supreme Leader's positions and the regime's demands. There is nothing in Musavian's work different from what we could hear in Tehran's Friday prayers or could read in governmental press in Iran. Musavian has meticulously followed the regime's talking point to present Iran as the party ready for dialogue and compromise, while U.S. administration is framed as hostile unwilling to accept Iran's rights and influence in the region. The U.S. policy since Revolution 1979 has been based on regime change. Iranians, they have approached the U.S. during all administrations for a comprehensive package and, co and comprehensive deal. When you read my book, you would see that I have explained during three top nuclear negotiators since 2003 during President Khatami and Ahmadinejad both. All three top nuclear negotiators, they have sent the message for White House that we want grand bargain with you. We want a comprehensive deal and relation with you, including the nuclear. But the U.S. has declined. The United States has never proposed Iran a comprehensive package, never. My suggestion is this. Any U.S. administration, I hope after election, because we cannot talk before election, <laughs> propose at least once after 33 years a comprehensive package, including terrorism, weapons of mass destruction, peace process, Israel, human rights, democracy, all these uh, major points for the U.S. and Iranians also, they have their own shopping list. And they, the U.S. also should be prepared to address Iranian concerns. Musavian's work at Princeton was not limited to influence public opinion, but also to advise the U.S. administration. According to Princeton, Musavian, von Hippel and Kemp co-taught a graduate workshop on the formulation of diplomatic initiatives to address Iranian enrichment. In early November, four students traveled to Berlin and Paris with Musavian, and four to Moscow and Vienna with von Hippel to interview senior officials and non-governmental experts. A final report was completed in January 2012 and briefed at the National Security Council the State Department, and the Senate Foreign Affairs Committee. So why would a U.S. university pay an Iranian former official to lobby on behalf of the mullahs regime? Could noble goals such as preventing war justify such pro mullahs campaign? Let's look at the funding for Musavian's work at Princeton. 
Plowshares Fund that officially works for peace in the world has paid $120,000 to support Musavian's advocacy and describes his work as efforts to reduce tensions with Iran. Does advocacy on behalf of Tehran reduce the tension or buy time for Iranian regime? For the past several years, Plowshares has paid millions of dollars to individuals and organizations that support friendship with Iranian regime or lobby on behalf of Tehran. The clearest example is National Iranian American Council, known as NIAC, that has received hundreds of thousands of dollars from the foundations. NIAC and its president, Trita Parsi, are regarded by many in the Iranian community as the lobbyists for the Iranian regime and governmental press in Tehran called NIAC, the Iranian lobby in Washington. Does Musavian's work at Princeton help to resolve the standoff with Iran or, on the contrary, manipulate public opinion, influence U.S. administration, and buy time for Iran's nuclear ambitions? Watch Musavian's interview in 2005 in Tehran on government TV when he explained that Iran's collaboration with IAEA and negotiation with Europe helped Iran to buy time to advance its nuclear program. اینها اطلاع ندارند که در اون مرحله یعنی در شهری بر 82 ما احتیاج به یک سال کار داشتیم تا پروژه اصفهان به تکمیل بشه و به بحر برداری برسه یعنی میگن ما باید در همون 50 روز اصفهان رو ناقص رها می‌کردیم به درخواست آژانس تامین می‌کردیم تامین می‌کردیم اون رو تامین ما یه سیاست دو فاکتور رو اجرا کردیم یه نظام اجرا کرد هم با آژانس کار کرد بسیار فعال هم در یک مجموعه سیاسی بین المللی مذاکره کرد این کار باعث شد که ما آژانسی که 50 روز به ما مهلت داده بود که کل فعالیت های غنی سازی رو به تعلیق در بیاریم و فعالیت های مرتبط با غنی سازی رو از قبل مذاکرات با اروپا یک سال زمان برای ما به وجود آمد که اصفهان تکمیل شد. یک زمانی بود در اون مقطع میگفتیم ما نه با اروپا نه با دنیا کار میکنیم نه با آژانس کار میکنیم به هیچ کدوم از این خواسته هم توجهی نداریم. خب اون یک عواقبی داشت خیلی روشن بود بعد از 50 روز شورای حکام آژانس پرونده ایران رو بدون تردید به شورای امنیت ارجاع میداد. بدون تردید. اما اینهایی که میگن باید فقط با آژانس کار میکردیم یعنی ایران رو محروم میکردیم از اینکه در یک سال زمانی که به وجود آمد اصفهان تکمیل بشه اصفهان با این یک سال تکمیل شد حتی در نتنس یک شش ماه الی یک سالی کار لازم بود انجام بشه تا کارهای تکمیلی سانتریفیوج ها انجام بشه با این یک سال هم کار نتنس به مرحله رسید که تعداد محدود مورد نیاز اولیه نتن سانتریفیوج ها میتونه الان کار بکنه هم اصفهان به تولید رسید هم یو سی اف هم یو اف فور هم یو اف سیکس ما یو سی اف اصفهان رو مهر سال 83 به تعلیق در آوردیم این رو باید مهر 82 به تعلیق در می آوردیم و اگر در اون تاریخ به تعلیق در می آوردیم اصلا اصفهان تکمیل نمی شد ما امروز در یک موضع قدرت هستیم اصفهان به تکمیل رسید و تکمیل شد باز یو اف فور تولید میشه یو اف سیکس تولید میشه ذخیره تولید به 36 تن کیک زرد رو در طول این مدت ما فرصت پیدا کردیم تبدیل کردیم انبار کردیم نتنس خیلی از کارهای تکمیلی انجام شده این تعامل با اروپا باعث شد که کاری که در 50 روز برای مدرب الاجل تعیین کرده بودن ما در طول دو سال انجام بدیم اصفهان رو از این قبل از این طریق تکمیل کردیم کارهای تکمیلی رو از این طریق در نتنس انجام دادیم و خب بالاخره امتیازاتی هم گرفتیم ده سال عضویت ایران در سازمان تجارت جهانی با ممانعت آمریکایی ها مواجه بود این برداشته شد ایران وارد مذاکرات سازمان تجارت جهانی شد 
دنیا به رسمیت نمیشناخت که ایران عضو گروه بین المللی چرخی سوخت باشه در طول این دو ساله از قبل تاقبنامه پاریس ما ما رو به عنوان یکی از دارندگان چرخی سوخت وارد بازی بین المللی چرخی سوخت کرده مذاکراتی که بود نماینده ایران وارد اون شد و خیلی از امتیازاتی که در طول این دو سال به دست آیا مستقیم یه بحث هم که شاید جالب باشه برای بیننده ها این بحث در واقع بررسی تطبیقی یا نگاه تطبیقی به فرونده فرده هسته جمهوری اسلامی ایران با کره شمالی هم این تصور وجود داره که اگر ما ارگوی کره شمالی را در پیش میگفتیم طوری محکمتر در واقع جلوه زیاد تداری های آمریکا و ارگوی کنیسی بیست ما در طول مذاکرات دو ساله گذشته بسیار فراتر از کره شمالی تونستیم پیشرفت داشته باشیم پیشرفتی که امیده ترین پیشرفتی که کره شمالی داشته در بخش تزمین های امنیتی بوده این چیزیه که ما یک سال قبل با اروپایی ها به نتیجه رسیدیم با اروپایی ها پذیرفتن که تزمین های امنیتی ایران رو حاکمیت ملی ایران رو استقلال ایران رو عدم مداخله در امور داخلی ایران رو امنیت ملی ایران رو عدم تجاوز به ایران رو در سطح بین المللی تزمین کنن Musavian's advocacy at Princeton is yet another example of Iranians' influence in Washington, made possible by generous assistance by its American allies.